welcome achievers. Emmett is looking for a dramatic entrance right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, didn't think about it. Now, until right now. <laughs> <laughs> you look ter- you looked terrifying. But now, achievers, this is essentially E three breakdown recap. I didn't know really what to call it, so I just really wanted to sit down with not only my beautiful co-host Alex, sitting of course, but then I wanted to bring in the number one player club himself, Emmett Watkins Jr. Okay. All right, I will take that compliment. Thank mm-hmm. you very much, and thank mm-hmm. you for having me, y'all. Oh God, anytime. You're straight up welcome. Literally anytime, even in the middle of a fucking show. All right, you you want to come in? You break <laughs> down the wall. You tell me how much you like PlayStation Bet All Stars Battle Royale, and then you leave. There we go. All <laughs> right, I, I will cash in that later. <laughs> so, uh, g- gentlemen, originally um, E3s, I like to like. All right, how were the conferences? What did we like? What did we dislike? Correct me if I'm wrong, any one of you. I don't feel like it's any contest, really, to discuss, like, who had the better conference, really. It's just discussing no. about the games themselves, rather than, I like, think we're far away from being competitive. I think it's just people... It's like, hey, this is what we got. Yeah, it definitely was very much like, this is what we got ready. So, I'll yeah, say the- there was an obvious top two, and yes. you can make an argument mm-hmm. for number two. Mm-hmm. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, it's very obvious who number one was. Right, yeah, for sure. And then even that one and two, whether you like Xbox, Nintendo, whatever. Mm-hmm. Once you get to two to three, I feel like that's a big old drop. <laughs> like yeah, after that. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know how much of E3 you watched, Emmett. Um, but I did enjoy mm-hmm. the random kind of side things with like the Freedom Games was really nice to watch. The PC gaming show, although not for me, was well produced and I liked that as well. But uh mm. do you have any comments on those few things and then after that we're just going to kind of get in the games um just conference wise i did get to see a big chunk of the shows here um i saw what pc gaming show mm-hmm. i saw most of it at least i, I saw all of the future all of the wholesome uh, of course ubisoft yep. <laughs> gearbox and coke oh. uh and xbox and nintendo so mm-hmm. i feel like i saw a bulk of that's, the stuff and then a good chunk yeah. of uh the yeah, a good chunk of the like the press shows, like the Game for All or I think Play for All from GameSpot. So uh, yeah, I saw a bunch of stuff. Some of my stuff actually pulls from some of the more obscure shows. So uh, I didn't yeah, a lot of good watch stuff on there. Play for All. What was that? Because Play for All for was well, they're actually still doing it. Like after oh. we're done recording this, they're doing another day of it tomorrow. Okay, and I think. I think tomorrow's the last day. But um, yeah, it's basically GameSpot got together, hit up a couple developers, mostly indie. And it's honestly, it's like Guerrilla Collective, like a bunch of indies are coming through. Um, but they do have some exclusive independent games that are revealing stuff just at this show. So it's like a montage of a bunch of games you've seen at these other indie showcases, but then they'll pop up and She Dreams Elsewhere will come up, which wasn't at any of the other shows. Mm. And then they'll talk about some more of the stuff that they have there in like a small interview segment. And then they'll go on with the montage where they show more indies, most of which you've seen before, and then another exclusive. So it's like a maybe five exclusives sprinkled between like 20 different games in the showcase. So wow. it's, it's a decent show. I have to admit here, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed. I did not... First off, hear at all about this. And I'm like, I'm on Twitter. I'm on all that stuff. I'm very shocked. I didn't even hear about this. I'm literally going to watch that after this now. Yeah. Because I'm very They've, They curious. promised uh, you just if play you're for into. All? Yeah, Play for All, I believe it's called. It's, it's from GameSpot. So one of their tweets recently is talking about it, if I got yeah, that name yeah. wrong. For sure. Um, but yeah, uh, what is it? Bright Memory Infinite stuff is coming tomorrow. So that's what I'm really excited about. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, what I tasked you gentlemen today was bring in. And we kind of do this everywhere. We have just a list of video games we want to basically show and be like, hey, this is something I liked and I saw on the E3 show floor or whatever you call this. Yep, yep. I'll start us off. You guys, I don't know how, what number. I didn't really give you guys a specific number, so just tell me when you're tapped out of all the games. You have. I'm going to start us off, though, because I wanted to start with something that the longtime listeners know I'm not a fan of, but damn, oh, was, it, was it good. Redfall, mm. which closed the Microsoft conference, which arguably mm. not really a way you want to close a conference with a CG trailer, but you're going to show me a CG trailer. Make it as fucking cool as that one, mm-hmm. because that my was cool. God, that was awesome. First off, if you watched our reactions, literally the first five seconds of just that pullout and her just sitting like crisscross, 
flipping through a mag. I was like, I'm already sold. Like you could have just yep. sold me that screenshot and I would have been like, I'm sold on this video game. Whatever this is, I have no idea. Already sold on this. But then they show me one of the coolest things my eyes could have ever processed with these like specific powers and then the very creepy nature of these vampires. You get these little whispers throughout the trailer where you don't really hear me and uh, the wife. I showed her the thing. She loved this. I was like trying to like hear everything. I was like, is it okay? And then... You get the blood trace, whatever's going on in the story. And I did hear a few, few you know, a lot, I, a lot of people share the sentiment of, like, CG trailer. It's not really gameplay. But, like, and I'm one of those people, but, man, was that good. I have to admit, like, I don't really care that I didn't see gameplay because it was so good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. Redfall is definitely one of my favorite games of E3. Uh, and also, I had the same moment at the beginning of the trailer. As soon as I... I think what I said, because I was actually on a friend of mine, uh, TL. You might know him as Turbo Bison on Twitter mm -hmm. if you want to go find him. Uh, I was on his reaction stream, and literally when that scene popped up of just a woman like flipping through the pages, I think I was like, oh, man, they literally made a game about black girl magic. Yes, like, <laughs> dude. Like, are you kidding me? The hairstyle was... I mean, I'm I'm over yeah. here like, are you? This is awesome. And then you yeah. kind of can already tell it's basically love for dev with vampires, but like, cool. Like, I want to see more vampire stuff. Yeah. yeah, I heard the open world thing, which I'm like, Oof, I don't even know how. Yeah, like, maybe it's more like a Gotham Knights type open world. You got like co-op adventure mm. going on. I have no idea, but you can I can't wait and drop out maybe. Maybe yeah, I yeah. I have I have no idea. I can't wait for this game. Yeah, that game yeah. Does, definitely looks exciting. As soon as I saw vampires, I was like, interesting. Emmett, I want to throw it to you. What's what's something you got? All right. Well, I'll just go ahead and say this so I can skip over it later. Uh, <laughs> Redfall is my number two mm, most exciting nice. game of E3. So, uh, yeah, right on the same page with that on that one. But my number one, I'm just going to start there and cut it off at the knees if I need to later. Do it. Um, my number one, Atomic Heart. Uh, oh, that is really? one. Yes, and it's it's partially because we saw it at E3. But it's it's more of a culmination of everything I've ever seen of this game where okay. Atomic Heart, uh, it popped up very briefly. Like, literally, I went back to see the trailer. It's literally 60 seconds during the Xbox mm -hmm. conference. Right. Um, that game is just speaking to me so deeply. Um, for people who don't know about it, you can go look at our old gameplay demos that they've released. Like, this game has shown itself several times, but not often. I think its first reveal trailer was 2018. Really? So, yes, wow. like that's how long this thing has been gestating. And it's good to see that progress is being made. Uh -huh. And it's been a kind of slightly turbulent, uh, feet, I guess, path for these developers. They've been making it. But the fact that they're on the Xbox stage and they're confirming it's with Game Pass, that really makes me think, OK, even though they didn't show a year or didn't show a release date, that really you know, gives me confidence on it. it's coming soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes me think it's coming a little bit sooner. And I'm just really into it's giving me like Bioshock mixed with Metro, mixed with mm -hmm, like that's what I said. weird but like also like weird technologies that don't it's exist in either Death, universe. Death stranding ish weird kind yeah, of yeah. brain stuff. The, now the with you said it's been just saying for a while, are you at all worried? Now, from everything you just said, it doesn't seem like you are, but are you at all worried like uh, it, you know, it's been cooking for a I while. Mean, if you ask Emmett of 2018 mm -hmm. that, oh, this game's going to take four years after this announcement, mm -hmm. um, I would have been worried. Mm -hmm. But something that I'm realizing, especially in the COVID times, it's like games take a long ass time to that's make. True. Yeah, that's true. Dude, yeah. Yeah. And so especially for these games where this team that's working on it is not like some massive, you know, 200, 300 person team. This is like a slightly smaller team. Uh, this is like THQ Nordic type of vibes. Like Biomutant is another game kind of in a similar vibe where it just mixed a bunch of stuff together and it looked like it was doing something cool. That was a 50 person team. And that took what? I think three years after yeah, it announced yeah, for it that to come out. Sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is taking four and this looks the way it does. It looks almost. I, I, I'm not going to say photorealistic, but it's going for graphical fidelity way more yeah. aggressively. And on top of that, just the artistic design is out of this world. So, like, I take their time. I'm sure it's going to come. I'm expecting yep. maybe next year because they were bold enough to show what they showed uh, here. But, yeah, I, I'm not too uh, scared about it. Mm -hmm. Alex, give me a game. Hmm. So we go in number one, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Take I that as you will. <laughs> yeah. He set a precedent. He set a precedent. My number one, is, and literally, 
we watched the multiplayer reveal for it yesterday. Halo Infinite, man. Oh, we're going right into it now. Yeah, okay. Right into it, man. I have to because oh, want... it just looks so great. We have a whole part uh, yesterday talking about Halo. So mm -hmm. I know where Alex stands. I don't actually know, Emmett. Are you a fan of Halo? I don't even know. As someone whose first Xbox was the Xbox One, I cannot say Interesting. Okay. I'm a fan of Halo. Um, that Halo is one of those franchises well. where... Didn't start I mean, well. yeah. I've, played, <laughs> I've actually played a couple Halos now because mm -hmm. I've had my Xbox systems for a little while. I played mm -hmm. Halo 1, played Halo 2. Um, the, it's play one three. of those franchises... I'm going to play three. My, mm -hmm. What I thought I was going to do, because I did this for Gears 5 when Gears 5 got announced, bought an Xbox, mm -hmm. played the go. entire franchise before yep. Gears 5, and now Gears 5 is one of my favorite games of all time. Nice. I want to I replicate that with Infinite. Mm -hmm. I, a, I've got to find the time, and B, I've promised to play so many Ratchet and Clank games on stream. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Interesting. You have a backlog a of, of a backlog There's, to go through now. Yeah. If, you need some, if you need people for legendary uh, uh, legendary uh, the co-op oh, campaign. Co -op. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I definitely know who to call them, but um, but yeah, Infinite. No. Uh, specifically, <laughs> I'm very, I'm very interested in it because on, I'm Mr. Titanfall too. They got a grappling hook in it. It makes mm -hmm. me want to try it out already. already um, the fact that it's free to play, I mm -hmm. really think that's going to be really fun. Uh, it just looks like another like slightly movement based type shooter where a mm -hmm. lot of the older halos always felt a little bit like slow and stiff but this feels like it's gonna this one seems like it's in the middle because i feel like five was a little too much and then yeah. and like four was it was okay i think this one's just right in the middle between three and five you're like okay they they took things from three they took or from the original trilogy they took things from the new ones and i think they just so far it just looks great the customization looks awesome literally the first one of the first things i said to to elijah i was like oh my customization is what i'm excited for and literally they had a whole section just of customization i was like yes yeah well, they know what they're doing with it hopefully they can connect between three and five yes all right well <laughs> now we got i'm gonna take a the whole and now this is in no particular order, so I'm just throwing stuff out there, but I want to bring up Back for Blood. Specifically, this is a little cheating because we already knew about Back for Blood, but specifically for the reason where I, I'll be honest, I wasn't really sold on Back for Blood. I was kind of in that like side group where I'm like, I'll probably buy it and play it. But now with this like trailer that they really showed stuff off and they showed off the weapons and kind of like more of the environments, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm buying this game for sure now. And this game mm. for sure now. Whereas the before it was great. a big, it was a, probably a real big maybe. Now it's a, okay, yeah, no. This is an instant probably day one by now. And I can't wait. And thank God it got delayed. Because if it looks that yes. good, yes. Take your time. Yeah. And it's yeah. day one Game Pass too. Excited for that. So good. Oh, God. I, I, keep for, I keep forgetting. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's day one. So right? many. It's game Pass so, is, there's so many games game Pass on Game Pass, stupid. man. It's crazy. Game Pass is stupid. Um, Emmett. Uh yeah. Uh so yeah, I'm I'm right there with you for Back for Blood. Not on my list, but something I know I'm gonna play. Mm -hmm. Um this my little third slot here, I it's really hard for me because one game I'm super hyped for because it looks incredible, and then the game right underneath it, or kind of tied with it, honestly, is a game that just plays incredibly, which is why I'm excited for it. So I'm gonna share the one that looks incredibly first. Um, Sable. I I'm so excited for Sable, mm. and I just realized on my list I spelled it wrong. It's L before E, but whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Sable. super excited for this one. Yeah, exactly, Sable. Uh, I'm excited for this game mainly because uh, it just looks gorgeous. Just that art style. It literally, like, something happens inside of me when I see gameplay of that game because it doesn't look like it should exist. <laughs> And then, like, my brain starts, like, leaping to all the conclusions of, like, how the hell does this exist? How the hell is this even possible? And then, like, my brain just explodes with the, like, possibilities of an art style that looks like that. It, it does And the fact that like I can movie, play it. Which is strange. Yes. It, yeah, it, it looks look like, like a... Movie. If I saw a movie that looked like that, I'd be impressed. But the fact that that's, like, live gameplay just blows my mind every time. And um, I haven't gotten a chance to play the Xbox demo. I'm trying to save that for a stream tomorrow to play. Okay. Um, but yeah, I really want to get my hands on that and see if it holds a candle to the other game that it's kind of tied with uh, to see if it plays as good as this other game does. Because, God, this other game's really, really dope. But we'll Ooh. get to that one next. Getting me excited for the next one, too. I love that. I actually <laughs> have it, the demo downloaded specifically because you gave it like that special shout-out tweet that I saw. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, well... All right, Emmett's freaking out about it. I got to figure out what it's about. So I do have it downloaded. I'm actually 
going to probably play that this weekend and try to get through that because I downloaded at least like 10 demos and I'm just going <laughs> to really get through all of them and, and figure out like what I like, what I don't like and probably make little Twitter reviews like it did last year. But Alex, mm. let me know the game. So this game, as soon as, because um, I had seen it sometime last week, it was before E3, but you brought it up again and I was like, this i just something like you said uh with sable i mean it just this was something hits me every time i see it and it's song of iron uh it's mm-hmm. the where you're like kind of like uh, it's like a 2d uh, scroller uh, you're like a viking it kind of gives me that inside you know type game feel but like uh i was looking like a little bit of the combat and it just looks super cool you're like a, it looks more silhouette on your character you don't see much color but it like like i said it's more of the inside it was more dark but yeah, you can see the dark. combat and stuff. It's super. It just looks super good. You have to. You can be stealthy if you want to, or you can go out and, and just attack people. Uh, just like when you you start hitting your axe uh, at the enemies, like you could see the animations or the blood. The, I think it, I think you could see the blood splatter. It's just so cool. Oh. And I've always been into the Viking like lore and style. Like this game just excites me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually found this game as well and saw it on Twitter, and I was like, oh, this is actually pretty cool looking and i had never heard of the game before so i was like i gotta look at this and i just kept looking at it and i can't i can't wait to see more of that because it definitely i couldn't definitely i couldn't find much about the game but what i could find i I love it can't wait for more all right next Next. up what's your what's your next one replaced this was the Mm. 2d i mean uh, I mean, beautiful barely is a word oh, to describe what style. was on that. I mean, the art style was. I mean, and I feel like this is almost the E three of of art style. Almost like there's so many mm-hmm. games that I feel like <laughs> visually caught me, and I just I I'd be essentially fall in love with the game. And and specifically with this game, it reminded me of um, I think it was the last. It might have been XO. Oh, the last night. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yes, that's the one night, everybody's talking about. It looked a lot like that, and at first I was like, is this that game? I couldn't even remember the name of it, but I was like, is that the game they've shown before? But then it said replaced. I was like, oh, this is all new, and boy, I can't. That is one of those games where I like, I can't wait. First off, I can't believe, just like with you said, Emmett, this is real. This looks, it looks <laughs> like the trailer that hypes you for the game and not the actual game. It looks like the, yeah. the thing that like gets you excited, like yeah, but you know, it's not really going to look it's like the this. CGI trailer or but, something. Mm-hmm. But man, I can't, I can't wait, Emmett. Give me another one. Yeah, uh, I'm right there with you on that one too. That one looks great. I, I'm a little worried about if the gameplay is going to be great because it just it's looks kind of always the worry. Yeah, it, it just looks kind of one note to me. But I, I guess I'll wait and see. I don't want to talk too much shit before I've played it. So. <laughs> um, but one that I have played is this next one, part of the Future Game Show, actually. Um, they had, I think, a couple dozen demos from the Future Game Show available to download now. Okay. And I downloaded Severed Steel. So, um, what is this? I ooh, I like when I haven't heard about something. What is yep. this? This one is, I mean, honestly, I said it earlier. I'm Mr. Titanfall 2. This is a first-person oh, shooter. This is cool. Yep. It's a first-person shooter where you basically get put into a room and you just mm-hmm. like like what's the game uh super hot style you get mm-hmm. an objective flashed on your screen and you just go do it and there's a room full of enemies and you t- kill the enemies as well and you gotta just like go through these like labyrinth boxes or whatever to kind of platform your way to the objective shoot whatever you need to shoot get to the Whoa. exit but what makes it cool is number one your character only has one arm yeah so She's a you're a sharp shooter exactly one arm sharpshooter so you're picking up guns you're not reloading anything you're just shooting what you have then throwing it away picking up another gun off the next <laughs> That's cool. and you can wall run there's like double jumping there's mantling there's like you can dive through windows and just dive at any time to like get yourself in the air for an extra second and then you can hit the other trigger because there's no aim down sights you hit the left trigger to slow motion and you can just slow if you kill enough people you can just chain slow motion for most of the level and just like get pop headshots from a distance and there's like a combo meter where it's like double kill triple kill all this stuff it is really satisfying it was one of those games that looked fun when i saw the trailer of it so i was like all right let me try this and i was like oh my god i really want to just i want to keep playing like the demo stops after about like 
I think 20 minutes, but they have like a score attack mode with like different maps on it. And I'm like, I just want to play this forever, but I need to play some of these other demos. So I went you on said the demos out right different. now. Is it only on PC for the demo or is it on X console? Uh, uh, as far as I know, it's only on Steam. I, I don't think it's on console yet, but okay. um, actually, I don't think the game is set to go anywhere except Steam right now. No, it says FPS is in the works for Xbox, PlayStation and PC. Oh, it's okay, great, for, great. I just well, didn't know the case, demo because yeah. I want to try the demo out. Yeah, that game is definitely like it hits me. Like it, it hits in the same nugget as not just Titanfall two, but like Get to the Orange Door is another one of these types of indie shooters where mm. it's like, what if we just took the movement from Titanfall two and put it into a different context with a cool art style? So yeah, I'm really digging Severed Steel. Dude, thank you. I am downloading that immediately after this because hell yeah, that sure. looks so much fun like it, the trailer starts and he just bursts sideways through a window and like shoots like three just, people running through it, it like, reminds oh, okay, me okay then playing this video game now it's like super hot time fall and Mir mirror's edge had a baby it's weird yeah it gives me that yes. mirror's edge feel too yes it is like yeah oh yeah that's so well put alex keep keep that going with the uh, and bring me your next game <laughs> <laughs> my next game so i've been uh, the, uh, i don't know how you guys feel about music this but like rocksmith plus is big on my list and it hates oh, music okay. i'm sorry to tell you <laughs> like, like playing it. music it's like, let me rephrase Taking that playing music <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but yeah playing... i respect this pick yeah 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 yeah. playing music i i have <laughs> i'm Same. i feel I like a guitar, I'm... so i definitely want to try that out yeah i'm i'm like tone deaf so i have i've never had a, a <laughs> way of using instruments in, in my opinion but yeah. but uh, alex i am actually excited for you because you actually had the original rocksmith i remember i think it wasn't out 360 the what? first one's on 360, yeah. and then 20 Rocksmith 2014 oh. was a remaster that was on 360, and it came to Xbox One, which I have. Mm -hmm. And then I um I heard I saw I saw Rocksmith Plus, and I'm like, yes, that'd be awesome. And then they said it's a subscription service. I was just so I'm like I'm you. trying to figure out I'm okay. trying to figure out what it incorporates still. Yeah. Does that are you saddened at all, or is this fine to you? Um, Would you rather like is it fine? It's I mean you depends. have a PC, so it should be okay. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what the subscription service entails. Right. So, like, if like like, can I play the game without the subscription service? Do I get like a limited amount of mu uh, songs, or like, do I have to like to even play it? Do I need the subscription subscription service? Or is the the game is does it have a, f a single price, or is the game free? And then I buy the service. Like, I don't know what it entails. I haven't really said much. Mm, yeah. I, so when I tried figuring out for when we go back to the normal show. I can't really mm. find too much about it either, so I don't know yeah. if they're ready to fully unveil how this works or not, or maybe I'm, I was looking at the wrong places. I registered for the beta, so I'm waiting on just to see if I get uh, accepted for it, because some people on YouTube already have been playing it. I'm just waiting mm. on to hopefully I can get it, because I will definitely try it, and I'll definitely get back to you on that. Mm. If yeah, I, I, I mean, just my guess, I, I have a feeling that's going to be subscription service only, and mm. the games are, if you want to play the game, they're going to be, they're going to pull a Don Matrick and say, well, we have a perfect product for you, Rocksmith 2014. So, yes. Oh my know. God, what a deep that's... cut. What a deep cut. If you don't know that, <laughs> yeah. if you don't know that reference, first off, congratulations, because that means you didn't yeah, live, you didn't you didn't live, live through, through that. that. You didn't live through that. Oh my God. Ah, ah. Get that mm -hmm. taste out of my mouth really yeah. quick. Rocksmith Plus does look cool, though. If does. I played guitar, I'd be into it, too. Oh, it does. Now, I'm going to actually do, like, almost an intermission here. Because mm. I just want to... Okay. I really... Be honest, guys. I want to bitch about something. So I'm oh, just going to okay. sit here and bitch about something. There we go. Let me get comfy. Square Enix. Love the company. Made one of my favorite games ever, Kingdom Hearts. Yes, I'm a Kingdom Hearts fan. I'm sorry that everyone's annoying about Main. it. Second. Main. There we go. So, he, he is wearing one. <laughs> Second, I love Final Fantasy. Love it to death. Also, I love consoles. So imagine my surprise oh. Oh. when they show me Final Fantasy 1 through 6 being remastered. And I'm like, oh, you can literally watch my reaction right now live. Oh, Easy oh Achievers God, on YouTube. Reaction. From 100% oh, no. excitement to the words PC and mobile. <laughs> Emmet, PC. <laughs> God and damn. mobile. If there's one thing, this man Why? is not a mobile player. Why <sighs> do you do this to me, Square? You do this with the Final Fantasies. I don't understand. I would pay you know like what's funny? forty dollars for each of those games. I'm not each? proud of it. Oh, no. I'm not proud of it, Emmett, but I would. 
you know it's funny final fan the old final fantasies are already on mobile for like 15 dollars each i can already, already play them <laughs> and you're <laughs> be like that man you're down bad i don't know what to tell you bro <laughs> luckily there's a uh, game man, luckily he, there's I'm... a game on my list that brightens my my life up but you can I'm... see his excitement is like his happiness just fall he was just like oh. honestly i saw rocco bottle from uh from uh mega 64 have the same that reaction where he was like oh man four is my favorite game like on the verge of tears and he's like i can't wait to play it i'll play it anywhere i don't care and then they show mobile and pc he's like oh what the fuck Oh my god, just dude, yes, that gone. was amazing, yeah. I I, mean, I was already like, I can't wait to play 6. Oh my god, that <laughs> final boss fight is going to be amazing on my giant TV. Holy shit, this is going to be awesome. I wonder if I'm going to... PC Mobile. And then... You know what you can do? You know what you can do? And you're going to you're gonna cut me? Uh... You, can just, yeah, you can just airplay your phone onto the TV. I mean, honestly, I, I pulled up the Razor Kishi right now. Like, the Razor Kishi's pretty cool. Like, I don't I know what imagine. anything you two just said to me was, but <laughs> w- w- Emmett, give me another game. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, next game on here. Uh, this is a game a lot of people have talked about, also from the Xbox press conference. Uh, gives me like limbo vibes, like some play dead vibes in the form Ooh, of I Somerville. Have, I have this on my list uh, yes. as well. Good job. Yes, Fuck yeah, dude. Good Fuck taste. Yeah. Good taste. Yes, yeah, Somerville is one that. Um, it just looks really cool. Like mm-hmm. I yes. played Dead Day, or at least Inside, because I played Limbo as well. But Limbo mm-hmm. at a at a certain point, Limbo felt more like a puzzle game than a interesting mm-hmm. vibe experiencer. Yeah, uh, I can agree with that. Or, yeah, yeah, but Inside totally like subdued the puzzles a little bit, just so like the weird and interesting tone of that mm-hmm. world could breathe. Especially that ending with Inside. Oh yeah, exactly. That oh. ending is really what made it for me. Oh my yeah. god, I just got a flashback. Yeah, yeah that ending is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, if you haven't played special. Inside, go play Inside and so good. figure out what that exactly. was meant to mean at the end. There, I don't know <laughs> exactly. I Lord only knows, but um, but yeah, uh, Somerville is definitely giving me a similar type of tone, type of vibe, uh, and the fact that it's like a family unit this time, where you're playing as a character with other characters mm-hmm. um i think that's gonna be interesting of course this isn't from play dead is from a different i think a developer that actually left play dead to go make something else and this is that something else it's and almost the exact same it, art style too which is which i was like yeah at first i was like is this play dead and then i was like this can't be play dead like this doesn't seem like like i feel like you play that and mm-hmm. like this is play dead's new game so i was like this can't be this can't be it so it is interesting that it, yeah. it really does look exactly like inside and it's not which is <laughs> yeah interesting. To see. So I'm excited to see where it defers because it definitely looks like it's going to take some different swings and go into some different things thematically. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited to see what that is. But yeah, that first look looked really cool. Can't wait for next year. Yeah, jump oh, yeah. shit. You were correct. And it was um, a studio started by the founder of Plated. I know Pat. Yeah. I did not know that. That is, that is it. Very interesting. And that the game does look very creepy, especially with the the... A uh, very poltergeist TV, and the kids like waking up and looking around, and you hear an alien like yep. rummaging through the kitchen. Ugh, I don't like that very much. Alex, give me a game. I dig the creepiness. Okay, Alex, yeah, there's... Alex is thinking. Mm. Ooh, he's thinking hard. I like it. Because <laughs> I know this game is on your list, and we've been dying for this game. So I'm wondering if if it's on Emmett's list too. Twelve minutes. Oh, I know. Oh, oh okay. it has to be right, Emmett. No, no, no. I mean, I it, it would be. I figured someone else was going to talk about it, so I left okay. it off, but I'm yeah. glad you brought it up. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. 12 minutes just looks so cool. I mean, it's a, first off, surprisingly, that they have three crazy voice actors already in this. Um, but uh, That's um, what happens just, when you hang out with Greg Miller. Yeah, true. You get that money, mm-hmm. and then you can fill, afford Willem Dafoe. How the fuck? For let, real, how, let, the, play, how the fuck afford an Oscar nominee? How the fuck could they afford that? For real though, like seriously, how how did they get these three? Like, good, I mean, I am it's so coming happy to Game Pass them. day one. You got to mm-hmm. imagine, because like I imagine mm-hmm. their imagination or imagination, imagination. Well, animation got, probably isn't that high. Yeah. Like Ray, we got Ray, Green Goblin, and uh, <laughs> Professor X, uh, Xavier. Okay, like what? That's true. That's true. I mean, but no, no, this game looks awesome. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm very excited for it too. That that's definitely one of my most anticipated. I'm gonna I'm gonna consume that as soon as it's out. Um, but yeah, it's it's a game that I've seen a bunch too. So I was yeah. just happier we got a date than I was to actually mm-hmm. see it again. It is a little cheating um, to be on the list. Let's all be fair. Let's yeah, all be fair. yeah, it's a little cheating on the list. I left it off for a reason. So, yeah. Oh, he <laughs> wants to play it. fair. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I'm I'm definitely on there with you. Twelve minutes looks hot. I don't know if mm-hmm. anyone actually cares about these games, but Metroid Dread was shown today, um, as of recording, and ah. boy oh boy, did it tickle something inside of me. I I mean, okay, it looked, oh my god, like it looks like what I want out of a Metroid game. I'm but not see, a I've huge, never really played Metroid. I'm not a this huge one fan me. of the 3D Metroids, but mm. and this is like what I want out of a Metroid game. This 2D first off beautiful i saw i saw a couple of people were saying it, they didn't love the art style i was like really i maybe i'm maybe i'm lost in the sauce so maybe i'm maybe i'm uh, maybe i'm i'm already biased it's a decent I art love, style I, I, yeah i liked it a lot i i don't know but the the armor looks really cool like i love everything mm-hmm. about it i mean there isn't too much to say because it very it was kind of very quickly shown and then all right goodbye but i'm yeah. just a huge we'll fan see of that i haven't played a metroid game <laughs> Uh, since I played Super Metroid with my dad when I was like 13, and I loved it so much, and I can't wait, I can't wait till I play wow. this game, because I never played the DS game because I didn't have one at the time. I played that one for a little bit, and that was probably the only Metroid game I ever played. Emmett, you got any? Games Honestly, left I've. Oh no, I I mean I got a couple left, but you know I'll cut it off at some point. Uh, by the way, never played a Metroid game, so I'm really hoping they really? bring Prime remasters to Switch. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. The first Nintendo system, mm-hmm. actually, that's a lie. I was gonna say the first Nintendo system I ever owned was a Switch. That isn't true. We had a Wii. I had a Game Boy. I just didn't really play it that much. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm I'm steadily trying to go through some of those games and slowly but surely, but it's very slow. Um, yeah. But hey, man, but then take it, time. Exactly, exactly. I got plenty of, you know, games ahead of me, right. including oh. uh what what which other ones am I gonna go on here? I got like four more on here. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna be a little bit more strategic about it and shout out I already talked about She Dreams Elsewhere earlier. I'm beyond uh, that game. Really I have awesome. four left as well. So I mean we're all even, I think. Yeah, oh, we're all so I mean you can take as oh, much okay. time as you want. Take as little time as you want. This is a very free we'll flowing see. podcast. They came for all you, right. Emmett. I wanna hear it you talk. Awesome. In that case, we're going to go ahead and talk about Lego Builder's Journey. Um, this is another one from, I'm pretty sure it was the Wholesome Games press conference. That sounds uh, right. Towards the end. Uh, yeah, towards the end, they showed this one off in their little montage. This game, I don't even know what the gameplay is, but it just looks really cool. I was literally going to uh, ask you what the game is because I saw it and went, what is this, though? I was, what, I'm still kind of someone... confused. All right, let's see what this is. I was on a podcast. I think this is also with TL, uh, Turbo okay. Bison. Yep. Someone on there said that it looks like uh, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, mm-hmm. um, where it's like a, a puzzle boxy type puzzle game. And then it looks like you're supposed to find the right puzzle piece to finish the scene and finish the scenario so they can like. The animation is awesome, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It looks like stop motion, but it's at like 60 yeah. frames. It yeah, looks dude, it insane. Looks, it looks insane. Yeah, like that's really the main thing that like got me interested in it. Where I'm like, mm-hmm. man, I could sit in this art style for a couple of hours and not get bored. Like, mm-hmm. like God. my mind thought when you said Lego Builders, for some reason my mind went to a Lego World. I'm like, okay, they're making a sequel for that, okay. But then you, then I looked that up and I'm like, oh, interesting. Yep, yep, yeah. I totally thought it was. Um, I thought yeah. with a name like that, I thought it would be something like this. But no, this looks like a very. This looks mm-hmm. way more inspired than anything lego i've seen in a while which yes. isn't even a diss i like the lego games Me but too. Oof, this this looks really cool so yeah lego's builder's yeah. journey i am fucking with that pretty heavily oh my god this is so cool yeah, yeah it looks so cool oh by the way if you're listening sorry i'm, I'm not bringing any of these up because i'm very afraid for everything breaking so if you hear something you know just bring it up on your phone or something yeah the side with check it out i'm telling you what to type <laughs> exactly <laughs> alex here you go give me a game mm. Mm. No. Oh no. I need friends to play this. Mario mm. Party Superstar. You better fucking find something. Oh. I, okay. I, 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 I like <laughs> Mario Party. I like Mario Party. So I want people because apparently this one you can play online with people. Mm-hmm. So I, I actually enjoyed that because I'm like, well, if I don't want to play by myself, my wife is it won't if she's at work or if she's busy, I want you know we won't be able to play. I need, I, I want I like having at least four people i don't feel like playing for the computer some all the time mm. they put online i'm like 
Now that gives me a challenge because you know the AI is sometimes eh, too easy. But now it, <laughs> no, it's it excites okay. me. Yeah. It excites me that they even bring back uh, two new, two new boards from the old games and then a uh, a bunch of the old uh, little um, what are they called mini games and stuff. So I'm just right. excited to play this one because the one that they had passed I think it was for like the 3ds. I didn't care for. I didn't see the press just... release for this. This is one through three with all of the boards and the mini games, right? Um, I, I, think, I think it's like all the old Mario parties, like you said, one through three okay. in one game, kind right. of like all the mini games in one, all the boards and stuff from the 60s. Yeah, because I was about to say, there's definitely been more than three. No, oh, uh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, because I there's yeah. Well, I'm saying like even on GameCube, like I I think on GameCube, the last one I played on GameCube was Mario Party five or six, and um there was a bunch of them. But yeah, I think I think this one has just over a hundred mini games from the original games and stuff, or overall yeah. games. So cool. it looks. I'm just super. Yeah, I'm super excited for it. I wouldn't mind trying it. I haven't. Pro- I, just, I don't remember the last time I played Mario Party. I think I was like a like, like a kid, like five or six maybe or something like that. I, I really don't yeah. even remember. I remember playing a Mario game. Couldn't tell you what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Be like, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do Advanced Wars. Uh, again, it's kind of cheating, so I'm gonna be very quick with it. So remaster. Can I ask real quick, what oh. is Advanced Wars? <laughs> oh my God, Emmett! I know, I know, Woo! like I, I can recognize it in a crowd, yeah, but I don't know how to play it. I don't know what type of game it is. Oh, like, Emmett! I'm so glad. This he, he, I hit so a nerve. You, he messed up. So glad. Yeah. <laughs> now, Game Boy for the original two is what this launched. Game Boy Advance, to be specific. These are fantastic okay. strategy games where this essentially you play as Orange Star, which is essentially you. You play as a few different characters, uh, Max, Andy, yeah. and Rachel, I think their names are. It's been so long, but you have like special <laughs> powers you have. There's, it's, of course, turn based because, you know, a strategy game. You can make army men, you can make um, yeah. tanks. Uh, it's all based on like a currency system that you built. You, um, you take cities throughout whatever map you're They're called on. cities yeah yeah i mean yeah there's cities oh, there's, okay. there's barracks oh cities okay, yeah yeah it. Did you, oh did, did you think i said i thought cities? you said cities <laughs> <laughs> that too cities. you go whatever you cities. said it, cities, but yeah i got you now <laughs> no, 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 yeah. cities and barracks to make units and then it progressively gets harder they introduce air uh, warfare they introduce um water with ships of course um there and the, and the, it gets more complicated like i said tanks uh you can then make anti-aircraft for when you're fighting the aircraft people it's very strategy based and it has that triangle system almost like pokemon where like my anti-air beats your plane your plane beats my sh- soldiers my tank beats your uh artillery units it's kind of like that like fire emblem too uh, okay and it's probably my favorite strategy game ever period and of course this is wow. nostalgia is up is a bunch of shut up about advanced wars oh my god first off alex <laughs> it released once and we haven't seen it since okay i Look, played this so much it's 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 advanced wars and suikoden oh, I- <laughs> You know what? I, 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 I bet you. I bet you can't fucking guess what my next game is. Emmett. <laughs> Sweet, I don't know. Um, we'll get there, I'm sure. Uh, well, speaking of the games of your dreams, uh, she dreams elsewhere. I'll go ahead and talk about this in full now instead of just giving it a brief mention. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited about this one. This is one that was in, uh, I want to say, the Summer Games demo event last year. And I played like 10 demos. I did like a whole stream where I was playing a bunch of demos. Okay. This, for all of them, I played them for like 15, 20 minutes, you know, not that long. I played this one for 42 minutes. Ooh, Damn. That's a media demo, too. Yeah, I was really into this one. It's basically, it's like an RPG maker game. Uh, so it has like a 8-bit art style, top-down, walking around, turn-based RPG. But it's it has a really interesting art style where it's only using like black and white and blue and purple. Like the color choices are very sparse in a very intentional way that I think is neat. Um, but the main thing that's keep that's attracting me to this game it's uh god i forget the guy's name i always forget the guy's name he was just on the thing talking about it darren something is his name studio zervir uh anyway it's made by one dude primarily uh one black 
Uh, she dreams elsewhere. She dreams uh, elsewhere. And you know what? I'm pulling up the Twitter right now. Do it. Devon Gooden. Oh, Davion Gooden. Davion Gooden. He is pretty much the... He he's the the animation, did the dialogue, writing, all that stuff. So we got an action um, verge so, on our hand. Yeah, it's an action verge type thing as far as creation goes. Yeah. And you can really tell that it's very much so from a specific vision. Uh I was when I was reading the dialogue when I was playing the demo back in the day, it's very much so like entrenched in black culture and like he's using like hip-hop music in the background as well and not just like oh there's a kendrick song i love kendrick but like <laughs> he's using like some like obscure like kind of like lo-fi hip-hop stuff and i'm like oh man this is like this has a very intentional direction to it and a it, it has a specific voice that i don't see in video games so like i'm really excited for it it gives me like how i explained it on a different podcast actually i explained it on the players club podcast as if Persona was written by Donald Glover. <laughs> That's oh, what it feels like. Interesting. Fuck. You want to say yeah. two things that get me going. That fuck that what you just said right there. First off, this yeah. art style. Yeah, hypnotic. I'm yeah. Hypnotic. yeah. Hypnotic. It's, oh my god, it's this very is surreal. incredible. Everyone, yeah. please do yourself a favor. She dreams elsewhere. Yeah. Look this up. This looks that looks cool. Fantastic. And it, my uh, god. It's releasing on Game Pass day one when it when it ever does come out. So That's awesome. uh it says yeah, it come out, it's supposed to come out this year because they uh, somebody showed it off in 2019. Yeah, so it's well, supposed to come out sometime this year. There's one guy working yeah. on this shit, so he can blow smoke all over us. It's okay, but <laughs> we will. F- it's it's coming soon, wait. though. It's coming soon on the I latest trailer. I will gladly wait for that. I, you know what? That that deserves a write down. There we go. <laughs> I'm really Got typing, it. so I'm full of shit. You're welcome, Davion. <laughs> <laughs> you just earned another sale. All right, you, you get you get your 10 percent, Emmett. Is that how this works? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I'll write him to cut me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alex, hit me. Mm. All right. As long so as you have some left, of course. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I mean, this one's a no-brainer. Forza Horizon 5. I'm mm. a big car guy. I love cars. This one looks great. And as soon as we were watching the trailer for this, I was like, ah. it, it's, you would think every year, you're like, oh, they, they, this can't look any better. I was like, it still looks great. Now, my fear, Uh-oh. which one's going to be better? GT7 or this? Mm, that's a hard oh, one. Mike. GT7 is a huge game. Like it sells millions of copies. Mm. So mm. I don't I and, don't know. And of course, and the the more sales, you can tell cool. you can tell the graphics on Horizon is more on the colorful, you know, not in semi-realistic side okay. uh, versus Forza Motorsport is more on the that's that's more on the GT side Look you at think this that would go ahead and Mhm. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. They show you the tires. I mean, does the I setting mean, get you excited? Mexico, of course. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, apparently, apparently, because uh, I was listening uh, a little bit about this one. It says uh, somebody asked if they have an autobahn type highway in this game at all. Uh, you know, the big long road, yeah, and true. they said that this this force this horizon has one of the longest roads that they've ever put in a game. It goes from one corner of the game all the way to the other side of the corner. It's like the longest one they've ever made. Wow. And I'm like, I'm excited to just literally take my fucking skyline and just zoom the whole thing. <laughs> wow. Oh my god! I, I, so I'm excited. I heard you wanted to bring yeah, something I, up, Emmett. Did you just have something? Oh yeah, I mean, for Horizon, like I agree with you. Horizon Five looks incredible. It looks like mm. a lot of fun. My problem is, I said this exact same thing for Horizon Four, mm-hmm. and when I got into Horizon Four, I think it's just my bias. I am right. always looking for the next Burnout Paradise, and mm-hmm. the hand. Forza is just a little mm-hmm. sim like, yeah. a little yeah. Yeah. brown yeah. to where yeah, it doesn't. I wish it would bring back the. Um, I don't know if you ever played. It was Need for Speed Undercover on the PS2, and it was just for yeah. some reason the for some reason the controls in that game it was just so easy to drift and so easy to control. I'm like, why can't you just bring this back? Just <laughs> make it easy for us to drive. Yeah. But just bring out Burnout Paradise. That was mm-hmm. literally like, the, the perfect racing game, in my opinion. The like driving it. in split second. That was fun. That was also good. I got to do Yeah, so EA. I'm just waiting for more. Yeah, yeah. Blame EA for all of our problems. Yes, but <laughs> uh, yeah. that I, I will play Horizon 5 just because it looks fun. It looks pretty. But mm-hmm. like, I know I won't stick with it for long because that handling is just going to get to me at some point. So, mm-hmm. so is, it, is it the complete? The, is it 
like too real is that is that what the issue is or is it not is it yeah. too sticky like like what yeah, it's it's just too sticky. Like it, when I think about Burnout Paradise, if I'm hitting a corner, I can just like all I got to do is like tap the brake and I instantly go yeah. to a power slide. This uh, one you like, fucking I slide see. across the field if you try to brake. That's true. Exactly. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. like I have to actually stick to the racing line in order to not veer off the track. So it's mm-hmm. like um, yeah, I get that. I know, like, something a little bit less restrictive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, dangerous I, driving too. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh my god, Which I forgot about right? that game. Yeah, Dangerous Driving One was pretty good, but oh, it was like a, it was a poor man's Burnout Three. But hopefully, gotcha. the next one's a poor man's uh, Burnout Paradise, which I was <laughs> I, I thought you had said Test Drive because they're making a Test Drive Limited too. Yeah, Test Drive. I haven't. I don't think I've ever played a Test I Drive. I but didn't either. Hey, no. I played the first one, but once long ago. For some and... reason, the 360 cover is burned into my mind. Literally, mm-hmm. no idea why. I never have or owned it, but for some reason, it's in there forever. Yeah. <laughs> Since you, guys want to, since you guys want to talk shit about Suikoden, my next game I know is exactly Iwoden Chronicles. <laughs> Put some respect <laughs> on their names, please. Here here in the name. I haven't had a Suikoden game since PS2, so let's all just calm down. Right? You've been starving. Mm. I've been starving. I've been out here. And, oh, my God. I remember when I started, uh, when I was, like, starting to do this and, like, trying to be a personality. One of my first things was, like, I'm going to fucking bring Suikoden back. And then you realize <laughs> when you tweet at Konami, they don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> so so, they, so you, then then I'm like, okay, maybe this isn't how I go about it. I'm just going to beg into the into the Ethoverse, and then maybe someday it'll come back. And luckily, you got something. A Kickstarter started, Emmett, about a year oh. ago. Been a year? Huh. Been almost a year. Almost a year ago. Okay. I dropped 100 bucks to ensure this game... Comes to me. This this thing broke like I think every record I think for Kickstarter or something. It's like four million plus dollars or something nonsense like that. They have a lot of money on this game. And not only that, what one of my favorite parts. I'm not mad at them. Make go make the money. I'm glad it's being made. But one of the best parts was I got an email from them. We're like, hey, we had a deal with uh, Xbox and we're being published. I'm like, oh, so you got a lot of extra money, don't you, motherfuckers? But but I'm not <laughs> upset. Not upset. Good for them. And it's on Game Pass too, which is great. I want mm-hmm. both of you. To try it and see if you like it. I'm very Definitely curious. Because that looks fun. Yeah, I I'll mean, try. It. Yeah. Th- oh, thanks, it's thanks. Fun. You guys all seem very excited. Oh, I guess I'll try it. Oh, I even told you. I even told you on stream. <laughs> this game at first, I was like, it looks fine. And you know, it's like, it looks like Oct- Octopath Traveler. And then the, the the more the trailer build up, I'm like, okay, I'll play it. Okay, this is cool. All right, I'm definitely playing this. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it just kept building up, and it just looks so cool. Yeah, artistically it's gorgeous, but like I have to be real with myself. I I'm also the person, the same person who's like, oh, I'm gonna play every Halo before Infinite slash. Oh yeah, everyone tells me I should play Yakuza. I'm gonna play that slash. Oh man, I should play all these Nintendo games. You see the recurring issue. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm say the you word Halos because you, you say the I'm word to that one. We put it on normal Halo. mode and we blow yeah. through those Halos, man. Mm-hmm. Halo. One. I mean, Halo should be easy just because I can mm-hmm. play through yeah. a shooter in a weekend most of the time. Yeah. You so, can. They're short yeah. games too. If you put them on easy, I mean. You'll, I mean, you'll blow, exactly. you'll blow through them. Halo mm. One, as we saw in a very infamous kind of funny stream, doesn't have <laughs> great direction. As long as you don't get too mad, you'll figure it out. <laughs> so, oh, I, like, I, I'm starting but, at three at this point, so I'm safe. Oh, the like, amount of times that we, you can see Tim wants to snap at Greg for doing something. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, now funny. we have yeah. my. Sorry, no, this is Emmett's. I just went with Theodore Chronicles. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, really quickly to uh, before you go, Emmett. Um, fantastic mm-hmm. game. If you haven't seen it, go look up on on YouTube if you can. It's very Octopath. What really gets me going? If you don't know what Suikoden is, you start as a singular character. You have to build up a team. You can go as high as 150 characters in the game. It's very unique. Mm-hmm. There was this fun, almost stock market aspect in Suikoden Five, where you bought supplies for like really cheap at one place, and you went to this other island because they had they needed like sugar. You sold it to them for like. Hundred thousand of the in-game money, and you made out like bandits, and then you, and then, oh my god, it's so good. There's there was like a rune system where it was magic, and you could use the runes. All right, wow. okay, I can I can see you guys are falling asleep. So Emmett, please take it away. <laughs> All right, well, I'll say the that that sounds kind of interesting, but I, I will admit it is no, it doesn't hold a candle to these last two games. Ooh. Um. I'm going to talk about both of them because one showed such a short amount of things that there's not much to talk about anyway. Okay. Um, so I'm going to kick it off with uh, We Are OFK. Um, 
This one was either during the wholesome, wholesome games, games, right? I'm pretty sure, or was it? Future? Yeah, I, 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 it could have been wholesome, but it also could have been future games because the art style makes me think wholesome, but the subject matter makes me think future. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's like a narrative adventure game, but the art style looks very, very vibrant. It looks just yeah, it looks cool. It looks like it's hitting you in the face with color from all directions, but the actual mm -hmm. game. The, the vibe I get from the trailer that I saw is it kind of looks like um, Life is Strange, but for 20-somethings instead of teenagers, which mm. I can feel I can vibe with. It doesn't look like it's supernatural at all, but it looks like it's playing with those types of things where it's just like, you know, coming of age, figuring yourself out, yep. new musicians, so it kind of ties into that. Uh, it, it just looks like a fun little story. It, it's the type of story where I don't think I would watch this if it was like a live-action Netflix miniseries or something. Right. But that art style makes it visually engaging yeah. just as much as the narrative would be engaging. So, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. And apparently it's a little bit autobiographical, too, which I'm super, That's super cool to see. Yeah, the team who made it is based off of the team who's actually making the game. So uh, that one's pretty cool. But I think the one that maybe all of us will have a little something to say is Battlefield 2042. Oh. Um, yep. I'm very excited for this one. Yes. Uh, I've been a... Yeah, I've been a Battlefield fan since I want to say like Battlefield three. three. Yeah. Um yeah, actually Bad Company two I really like too, but um for sure. Yeah. Those yeah, came in between, you know. But yeah, Battlefield it, yeah. Company Bad Company one and two, yeah, those are awesome too. Actually, shit. Now I think about it, Battlefield 1943, I also played a lot of. But in any case, mm -hmm. uh, this one I'm very interested in. There's no single player campaign, which I'm still kind of bummed about. But from the looks. You're making this game just like that one you just mentioned, the 1943 one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just multiplayer only now. Mm -hmm. uh, but at least this one seems like a, it's going to be a lot more dynamic. It's going to be a lot more to do from moment to moment. New equipment, mm -hmm. new vehicles, new maps, new modes of play. It looks really interesting. So. I want to interrupt. Please, Emmett, really quickly. Yeah, please. As you've heard on Twitter, I don't know if you, you saw it, I'm very much tired of the value arguments that we all have at every single turn, mm -hmm. but I do think it is interesting to bring it up now. The fact that it's $70 on new systems, current gen, whatever you want to call it, and then $60 on last systems, being multiplayer only, not having a campaign, not having seemingly any secondary mode it's really it looks like it's just multiplayer with the probably normal accoutrements is with some sort of death yeah. match, some sort of capture does that affect you at all i mean i've already been spoiled by the battlefield franchise because a, a lot of people have opinions on the games but a big part of the battlefield franchise for me is just how stupidly cheap they got if you wait to play them because what I, I think I bought Battlefield 4 when it was like $15 eventually. I eventually got all the DLC for that game for free and like a bunch of battle pass ba battle packs and stuff like that just because they were doing so much to like support the game and because it released broken they were like here's all this DLC forgive us. Uh they did the same thing for Hardline. Yep, they, they did, did something very similar for Battlefield 1. Um even Battlefield 5 actually all that stuff was free in Battlefield 5 anyway, but I'm familiar with the series being dirt cheap. And so for Battlefield 2042, I'm excited to play it. I don't feel the pressure to play it as soon as it drops this year. Uh, I can imagine myself fall next year, finally hopping onto it and having a good time. Or if they come to Game Pass, which everyone's expecting but hasn't been announced yet, uh, I would definitely hop on there. But yeah, it's one of those where I know I'm going to have fun playing it, but I'm not so antsy for it that I have to jump in at 70 bucks. Because honestly, for me... 70 bucks for just multiplayer isn't enough to cut it for me. Interesting. Personally. I am of the mind that you need... Hmm, how do I say this? I'll, I'll tell you a short story before I, before I do this. I remember as a child, I was probably... Uh, Overwatch launched 2013, so I probably would have been around 15 or 16, ballparking it, but... Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I would have been much older than that, I think. Who cares? <laughs> I remember Overwatch came out, and they said $60, and Overwatch was just multiplayer, nothing else, and I remember specifically telling to Alex in a 360 party chat, I will <laughs> never, and I'll say it again, I will never pay $60 for just multiplayer. Did I fucking buy that game when it came out? I sure did. Did I, have I spent numerous of money on things like Fortnite, Apex Legends, every time they have a fucking event and I have to drop the hundred bucks yep. to get a stupid heirloom on a character I'm never going to play, you goddamn right I do. It, it, like, all these other things, like, 
I feel like... Do I wish they had a campaign? Yes. Do I care? I don't think so. And I think yeah. I will only know that for sure when I play the game, I think. Mm-hmm. And, I, yeah, I, I'm right. and, and I will admit I was wrong. I, I really did think it was going to be Game Pass. I thought it was... I, I, was, I was like, this is for sure going to Game Pass. I was a hundred... I, was, I, admit, I look like a fucking idiot now, but I was 100% <laughs> confident that game was coming to Game Pass. I thought they wrote a nice little deal with Microsoft. All right, here you go. Here's, here's what? Probably $50 million to get that game on Game Pass, however much it probably cost, and... Get it on Game Pass day one, but it didn't happen. I really did, though. Uh, Alex, mm. you were along the lines of Emmett, where no campaign, you, you, you were a lot more hesitant to play it. Are those thoughts mm-hmm. still with you at all? Um, Do you want to change them? Are you? I, don't, I'm, I would definitely play it for sure, because I love 1943. Um, now, the thing is, if it'll keep me, as long as there's enough content throughout the time to keep me, I'll probably play like every weekend. But if not, they will probably I'll probably like see like oh there's a new DLC come out. Okay, I'll play it then and then bounce. But it's the things like to keep me consistent. You have to keep you have to keep like a good uh, amount of content in there, and it just for multi- being a multiplayer game. It's, it's yeah. gonna be very interesting because they're gonna be releasing. With Warzone, like I'm always playing Apex, so like, with, like that content's always up there. That's why I'm always playing it. Apex, Apex is, is Apex is awesome. First off, yeah. Second, like I literally just hit platinum uh, on rank, so I'm actually going back to try to hit diamond. Christ. Yeah, this that man. Me. Yeah, you know, no, I was, I was. He asked me, and I was like, dude, I'm not doing that grind again. I'm not. I'm just not. I'm not. It takes too long. It yeah, takes I'm long. playing with a friend of ours, and I was, and it just reset today, so it probably pushed me back to gold, and I'm like. All right, here we go again. Try to get to Diamond because I want that trail. A fucking masochist. But <laughs> I, w- I will find it very interesting. And it's um, Emmett, you know Titanfall 2 and how it happened. You know oh, yeah. what they did to that game. Hell yeah. Very interesting <laughs> All too well. that they're almost it, it, doing yeah. the same thing with Warzone. And then I'm a little nervous because I love Battlefield. But at, this, at a certain point, you are battling for time. Just mm-hmm. want to make sure we keep Apex good, everybody. Keep Apex good because I mean, it's. I'm sure Apex is going to be fine. Honestly, Apex is probably their bigger cash cow than Battlefield at this point. But like, because they're battling for time, because it's not just at this point, it's not just Battlefield. It's Halo. What's also coming out? It's, true. it's all if it God. Comes out. All these. Sh- I mean, Halo's coming out this year. There's no way they do it. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, uh, you're a lot more confident than me and the people who were talking about the game because they did. They, I feel like if they were, they would have definitely stamped the release date on that bitch. I, I, this I, year. I don't think they can go past this year. I. I, 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 I year. They can't go past this year, but I also feel like they might be having some of the uh, Horizon Forbidden West uh, kind of feel because I also feel like we don't have a Horizon date because they wanted to see what Nintendo was going to do. So now that Breath of the Wild is next year, that that shit's coming this year. Really? And with Halo, yeah, I'm pretty certain of that. But with Halo, I have a feeling that they want to see because there's so many shooters that are occupying your time this fall. I think they want to see what's going to be the best place to put it where it's not stepping on too many people's toes because they Halo isn't quite the everything shuts down for Halo game anymore. That's true. It's, that's it's true. now one of many. That's so. true. You are talking me into this because you literally, and it is almost like a Mexican standoff. You have your Halo, your Battlefield, and your Call of Duty. And almost. And honestly, Far like, Cry. Yeah, like, like, as in, like a a, a full on like multiplayer shooter, like they're all kind of like waiting for the other one. It seems like so you, I don't know, man, you might be talking me into this. This that actually might make sense. Maybe they're waiting on Call of Duty and and they want to stay out of yeah. out of their way. I I don't know, but when I saw there was no date on Infinite, oh, it it, it got me a little a little worried. I'm not gonna lie. Also, we saw a date for Starfield. What's up with that? What's up with that? For real? What's I mean, that's that? that's but that's the they 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 probably planned to do like some little alliterative release date forever, and so they said, might as well tell them now, even if we have nothing else to show. I'm I'm curious if I don't know. This might be a little too conspiracy theory, but I'm curious if that game's mm. almost done, 
and and they were at and they asked them to like hey why don't you just polish it up like really really well take your you know time what? push it to next year because we need this year for halo <laughs> like like we know we not no starfield this I, year, very curious i i don't think i'm right but let's just think think about yeah i i doubt that's completely correct no, i think it's going to come out and it's still going to be a little bit broken but probably mm. not as broken as like fall it won't be as broken as skyrim at launch i'll say that maybe as broken as are. fallout 4 which wasn't as bad but it, it won't be notoriously broken. I, I feel confident in saying that. Mm. We'll see if I eat my words later. <laughs> I was about to say, very, oh, God, very interesting. I love talking about this. They stuff. know what's at stake. They know what's at stake. They do. They do. That's almost why I feel like they don't want to be, they don't want to put a date on Halo because they know if they, if they delay it again, it looks silly. So in September, I'll, when they go next year. Next I'll September. say this. Okay. I don't think they're going to delay Halo. Mm-hmm. I could see them saying, all right, multiplayer in December, campaign in March. I could see that. The multiplayer, you have mm-hmm. to drop that now. It looks like they know what they're doing with the multiplayer. They do. But like mm-hmm. after I, that I, single I, player campaign or after the single player demo we got last year, we haven't seen another chunk of the single player ever since. So I don't know where they're at on that. I think they're... I just don't know what it is. I don't think there's a problem with the single player. I think they're so uncertain with how we're going to feel to it mm-hmm. that they're really trying to do everything possible to just make it perfect. And yeah, I, I think you could see the campaign getting delayed, but now that multiplayer is coming this year. No ooh, doubts about it. Ooh, I love talking about this stuff. I, I, I really, I really don't know if I'm being honest. I have no idea. You can tell me it's gonna, it's, it's, it's delayed another year, and I'd believe you. I think I'd be like, yeah, no, it makes sense. They need to make sure this thing's fucking no perfect. Way. It won't. It won't happen. It won't happen. I'll say that right now. It won't happen. Seen but... the latest to me. I feel like they're gonna push. Oh, God, yeah. I don't know. Because otherwise, what's what's this Microsoft exclusive then? Psychonauts two. All due respect. Say... That's not their biggest one. <laughs> Come on. A, and well, that's not even exclusive, is it? Then then all launch on PlayStation. I Oh fuck! You're right. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. Or, so, or, so they can't even Forza. say that. They can't even say that. <laughs> but I, yeah, I, Forza, so. <laughs> I want. I want to know. I want to know right now around the table. Let's let's have some fun with this. I'll buy you a steak dinner if you're right. If I'm oh right, my. each of you, each of you, I'm I'm serious. Each of you will fucking play Euden Chronicles till you beat it. All right. Okay. When All right. Alex, is it is it launching this year? Yes or no? You what, you didn't or Halo? Are you <laughs> smoking crack? Fucking Halo. Yes. <laughs> Halo. Yes. Emmett. Yeah, it's coming out this year. I'll say no for the fun of it. I don't I think it I think it probably is releasing this year. I'll say no for the fun of it, just to see. I won't be shocked. Mm-hmm. Well, I won't be shocked. When do you want to make a spicier time frame? No except November, December, earlier? What you think? I'll give mm-hmm. you the whole year. Let's let's make it fun. I'll give you the whole whole year. The cutoff date will be Christmas. Let's say that they're not going to launch after Christmas, but this is for mm-hmm. fun, I guess. Say okay. December. 20th. I'm going to say. Uh, all right, I'm not going to guess like the exact the exact day. I'm going to say the second week in November. See, okay. I was either th- I was either thinking the first week of November or the first week of December. Either one, first week of either month. I don't mm. think they want to. Mm, I don't know. Beginning of November I'm usually November. is Call of Duty Day, but they might not care. I don't yeah. know. I, I think I'm, I think it's for that one, so they can have it for Black Friday, so that they can sell it. Though, how system. much you want to bet? They'll bundle it with a system. How much you want to mm-hmm. bet? So X, no. Xbox Series X with oh, Halo sure, Five. They for sure are. They for sure. Are. I yeah. mean, they, yeah. I mean, they don't even have to. They could just say, "There's Game Pass on this thing. Look at how many games you get on the on the mm-hmm. package." Like they don't even have to <laughs> bundle a game with it. They'll bundle a Game Pass thing. They'll be like, "Here, three months of uh, Game Pass Ultimate." Bingo, bango, mm, bingo, bango. Alex, finish mm. off your list for me. So this is my last one, and it caught me by surprise because I did not think I was going to like this game, but this game looks cool as shit. Stalker 2. Oh, yes. Thank God somebody had it on there. This yeah. game I looks didn't. so I cool. This game, like, as soon as I was looking at it, I was like, you know, there's people who walk in, uh, talking around. They, they, they're kind of funny. I was like, I was enjoying it. And then he starts shooting things. I'm like, all right, this, the shooting looks cool. The way he scopes in and, the, and, the, and the, the, whole, the whole scope doesn't zoom in, only the scope. And I'm like... I kind of dig that. And then he starts getting outside, and it gives me a lot of Death Stranding Metro vibes. Like, mm. he's over here trying to see where the traps are, and I'm like, then you see these, like, weird ghost things, or the the traps, and then you see the aliens. I'm like, this is, like, Metro Death Stranding, and I'm digging it real hard. And then the, the gun moves, like, the animation of the gun with the lightning... Oh, this oh, game, I forgot I'm about that. Playing. Oh, my God, I completely forgot about that weapon. Yeah, the, the like... 
skeletal yeah, weird, movement. Yeah, it starts moving. Very unsettling, but it was fair. Like, it makes it got me so excited that I want to go play the first one. So I'm trying to see if it, I'm trying to figure out where the first one is so I can download it and try it out. Honestly, I don't know if it, if it matters, but I want to see. I want to get a feel for that world. The first game. one's very janky. It, okay. it, it did a lot of like innovative things that people still do today. Mm -hmm. but very janky. You can find okay. it buck on fanatical to get yeah. it on theme. <laughs> but um i'm right there with you stalker 2 i was very excited for when i mm -hmm. saw that but then as i was watching it I, two things hit me as i was watching i was like hey the next gen update for metro exodus comes out in like three days so mm, like that okay. scratched the similar vibe and also yeah. when i saw that it was like metro but weirder and i was like well i want this to be a lot weirder where's atomic card i want to see some of that and then 30 minutes later we saw atomic uh, card. Gotcha. So, i got you fair enough so that's the only reason it's not on here because my itch for that got scratched in two got ways. Scratched by something else, yeah. Fair yeah. enough. I I'm very excited for this. I I'll be honest, I was not. I had no idea what was going on in the in Stalker. I told Alex, I was like, God, I'm I don't know why, but I thought this was like a wasteland game. I don't know if you ever seen those games, <laughs> Emmett, but yeah, yeah, I thought it was like Probably wasteland when I originally showed this off last year. I think it was. When they were like, mm -hmm. oh, Stalker yeah. 2, I'm like, oh, is this like a Wasteland thing? I really thought it was and some some sort of Metro spinoff, because I, I, it gave me so much Metro vibe. Oh, it definitely is. Yeah. I think it's based on a novel. Or, mm -hmm. or, it's based on yeah, a short Metro's well, the novel. Well, was a movie, oh, I think, you. that they made based off the, the, like, in that same world. Yeah, they based the movie. Uh, actually, there is a movie called Stalkers. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a movie called Stalker, and then they, there's a book series I saw. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, it's interesting. Yeah, my last world my last one, gentlemen. Don't know if any of you heard about this. It's called mm, Dark Deity. Me. Anyone Ooh, hear no, about I this? Have. No, pl pl look, please look it up no. really quick, and I'll I'll describe to you to the achievers what what we're seeing. Dark Deity. Oh my God, Fire Emblem is what I'm gonna say. If you've ever played a Fire Emblem game, oh, uh, God, if you yes. like Advanced Wars, I mean, it looks first off beautiful art it is not you know perfect pixel art but it looks great anyways it looks fantastic oh. that kind of mm. nice sheen that's got the character models look really nice the art when they're talking to each other looks great um there's Very for some reason a, a lot of classes which i was like okay don't need that many but hey let's have fun who cares but but there's so many classes. I assume it's a very similar combat style to a Fire Emblem, where you got like a you know sword beats, a uh, pike arm versus arrows, things like that. I don't know specifically on the details of the game, but this popped out at me very quickly. I don't remember where I actually saw this. Unfortunately, well, the Let game, me ask the go ahead. game it, came out. That, the oh, the game came out today. Did yeah, it? I was about to say. Yes. It's out today. It has a blue jewel in the logo, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get, yeah, get it today. And it's 20 bucks on Steam. It's $5 off right now. Gentlemen, I know what I'm doing after this. Oh, my <laughs> God. I found this today. And I don't remember yep. where I saw this at. I think it was it during an E3 today. thing. And it showed it a trailer. It's like, oh, I wrote, I wrote yeah. it down, watched the full trailer, and went, oh, I'm going to talk about this on the podcast today. And Bingo. put it away. Bingo. Oh, my God. I get to play a cool video game after this. Let me see if that's on console for you while you uh, talk I about it. I didn't see it. I didn't see. I think it's only on Steam. Yeah, I think I think it's only a Steam game. Yeah, it's only on Steam. But Jesus, this is yeah. so cool. It's got it a got very elves. positive so far. Yeah, no, it looks it looks really cool. And I mean, literally, when they go fight each other, it is OG Fire Emblem. Like that is what Dude, like yeah, Fire so Emblem looks at, like. I can't. The map when you fight it's blue with the arrows. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, see, I got yeah, to this that's... ending part, and it was like, yeah, wish list on Steam. I was like, oh, so it doesn't even have a, a date yet, but my God, it came out today. I'm fucking, oh, my mm -hmm. God. So, I mean, and it's on sale, I guess, for you, the E3. Oh. Yeah. Oh, God. Time to collect. All right. Now, that's all of our games. I've kept you guys here for a while. Uh, 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 really quickly, Emmett. All good. Mm -hmm. Do you have to go? I've, I've, I didn't get oh, your... Oh, no, yeah. I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, we're good. That's good. I, I want to I wanna do I'm one I'm off more. tomorrow. Fuck it, bro. Hell yeah, <laughs> fuck it. Where, we did this thing where we, we settle down, you know? <laughs> really quick before we settle down, Alex. Mm, 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 mm. E3 as a whole is what I want to talk about. Obviously, I don't think... And maybe, you know, disagree, please, if you, if you want to. E3 this year, ups and downs is probably understatement but it was not mm. i would say e3 of your or whatever you'd like to call it right we still don't have a playstation you can argue if we need a playstation here or not i think it's clear that something happened with pr 
they don't want to be on E3 anymore, so we probably will never see them again unless something changes with how their PR slash marketing strategies are. How, as E3 as a whole, did you think this year was? It's not really comparable, really, to other years, so I don't really want to ask you guys that question because obviously kind of kind of an easy question, but what... what when I say, what did you think of E3? What's your first thoughts? Emmett, let's start with you. My first thought is, I, I feel like there was a lot of pressure on E3 this year to prove why it should exist. Because for some of us, we wanted just one place, one condensed week of news that we can all be excited about together. Me. Um, and that did serve, yeah. Honestly, I wanted that too. So it served its purpose in that case. But I think there was even a more more so of a pressure to prove, like, why should all these developers gather here? Like, why is this the epicenter? Why does it have to be here? Uh, because we got by fine. Not perfectly, but we got by fine last year. So yeah. I'm sure for a lot of developers, mm -hmm. publishers and stuff, they want to know why. I don't think E3 has fully done that this year. I think yeah. there's still... I think you still easily could have done another Summer Games Fest and just sprinkled it out throughout the whole summer. Yeah. I wouldn't have enjoyed that. Me but either. to publishers, to developers, I don't think there was much of a reason to not do that. And honestly, maybe that would be a better move in the case of a Capcom where they didn't have anything to show and they could have waited until they had something to show or just not even be pressured in to joining the big foray of all these other publishers and developers. That's like a, that's a, that's the thing that you brought up really well. Again, not to cut you off, but I, I love I love that sentiment. Do you need to be at E3? Now you do you do get to be a part of the conversation, although if you don't bring anything, I don't know, is negative attention good attention anyways? Because you're at least being talked about. That's a, a very deep a philosophical thing i don't think i'll be able to figure out but i mean i mean all press is good press that's yeah, that's the I saying mean, right yeah but like obviously I, take two should not have been here at the end of the day does that matter i don't think i can answer that i i coke media definitely shouldn't have been here i mean i think that's yeah. another thing where people a lot of people misunderstood what e3 is in this yeah, new form I, yeah I, I agree with that too yeah because mm -hmm. now it's not it's not just like oh we're gonna just uh we're gonna have all these press conferences and stuff like if if this is a traditional e3 where everybody's here in person then ign can be like all right we're gonna show you this one we're gonna show you this one we're gonna show you this one but now it's like everybody just give us something and we'll air it in this five hour block and some people totally misunderstood the assignment so uh, it definitely <laughs> seems that way it, de it definitely yeah. seems like oh yeah. i make a panel like for people to want, like, no, don't do that. Why did you do that? Yeah. No, no. But I mean, I don't know. I'm, I, I would say everyone who had a bad conference probably shouldn't have been there. I'm looking at you, Coke, Gearbox, you know, they probably shouldn't have been there. But at the end of the day, I don't know if I can blame them because at least you get talked about. I don't know. Alex, do you have any, any thoughts on, on what we're discussing here? Um, I was hoping because of the return. I was hoping they would bring a little bit more more oomph with it because you would think with E3 you would like with each conference you're going to come into you would like to be excited for at least one thing so you're you come in with that little extra like okay I I can't wait to see this but like for example like you said Gearbox take to Coke you're like oh these I can skip I was like you, I mean you should be you should watch you should be excited for each one and so like consecutively no, it wasn't great as a whole. As I mean, as as a whole, from all the games we've listed, to me, it was good. I was I was okay. happy with the outcome because the amount of games that I am excited for. I mean, I got what ten to fifteen games I'm going to be excited for. That's more than one. I mean, it's <laughs> true. That is more than one. I, th I think uh, I so, can I mean, that out. It's more than a handful. So, um, so as a whole, I think they did okay as a return could have been better mm -hmm. I, because I, I, of the I, return. I feel like they should have pressed to be like, Hey, it's our return. Let's make this a little bit more. Oomph. Yeah. I think, I, I think I can agree with that. And I think Emmett actually actually brought up another good point aside. Um, just like you did Alex with, they almost did seem like they did have to kind of prove themselves. And I think if we, if, if we really do look at who they hired to host, Big names, yeah. big names. I think that was kind of a, a very deliberate action. I think they paid a lot. First off, 
I just just a preference. We're all here fans of kind of funny. Oh, of course. Imagine of course. how expensive greg miller is now imagine how expensive greg miller at e3 is where he could be making content on his own channel so yeah imagine how much money they had to you know i don't want to talk about the man's and finances but we have to talk about it i mean we have shoot, to really they got golden boy jackie jing all like... of the big names da mm -hmm. damon hatfield which is one of the biggest names at ign mm. like yeah they spent a lot of money and maybe that was part of the like we're still here. Look, we got, you know, we got Greg Miller. We got yeah. Damon Hatfield. We got these people that you well, know. We got th some of the younger people, too, from GameSpot, from, um, you know his name. Help me out. Uh, oh, Michael Heim? Thank you. Michael Heim. Yes. We, we, yeah. got, we got him, too, as well. Like, like these are all in stadium. They're going to talk. Golden Boy is going to mess up a, a joke that he had about Harley Quinn or something, and then Greg yeah. is going to yell at him. <laughs> <I remember that. laughs> but, it was a Superman joke. But, yeah. yeah, Superman. That's right. But, yeah, if if you... I feel like, yeah, you really hit hit the nail on the head there. I think if you look at some of the decisions E3 made, I think you are right. They probably had something to prove here, very specifically. And they're like, well, well, let's really put some money behind this and dump truck full of money on all of all of the people we want talking yeah. during E3. And they, they put all the money towards that. I feel like instead, don't put it all towards that. Put it towards more to the actual event. Mm. See, but that. See, but the, the issue is though it's not in person. So like, where does that yeah, money go? That's. And then there's a lot yeah. of stuff we don't understand. What's ads on this? Because the people, I mean, as far as I understand, some people have to pay to be on E3, as an mm. ad is yeah. in some worms of ad space. So they could be making money that way. There's so many ways they can make money. Obviously, they I, have ads that they say on there too. So I don't know. I think of it. I think of it less as like, a, oh, they had to put a lot of money in here, and more of them just trying to grab this cachet. Like, I think sure. Greg and Golden Boy, Jackie, Michael Heim, like yep. all those. I think they're really trying to pull from like, all right, these are the people that you watch every day. These are the personalities who you're familiar with all the time. Mm -hmm. They're going to be hosting our event. So all you fans that have walked away for whatever reason, come watch this event. Come get excited with us. Yes. And Good I point. think that's like. That's like the power play they're trying to get. Yeah. But instead of like trying to get our attention through, look, all all the gang's all here. Like instead of doing that, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What like I would have loved it if they pulled it into more announcements, more exciting new things. Exactly. Yeah. And, but like it's really unfair to say that because it's like you can't force Capcom to just announce a new game. No, you can't. You can't yeah. force. Yeah, you can't force any of these developers, any of these publishers to just show something, especially when it definitely benefits them, especially after this pandemic. It benefits them to keep things to their chest until they're ready to show it in the meticulously perfect way that they want to. Exactly. So it's like a double-edged sword where E3 had to prove its, uh, not existence, it had to prove its justification for existing. Mm -hmm. Um and I don't, I, once again, I don't fully think it did that, but I, I did have a good time. I did have fun looking at all these games. Uh, I think, honestly, indies are really what got the biggest boost from this. And I think it'd be good if they, mm -hmm. if E3 as a whole leaned into that more and having it be, you're coming for the EAs, but you're, or I guess not EA this year, but you're mm -hmm. coming for the Ubisofts, but you're staying for the She Dreams Elsewhere or the Severed Steels. Like mm -hmm. that's all the stuff that we end up walking away from. I think they should really structure their show around that rather than saying, hey, we got the biggest things when really you don't have the biggest things. And yeah. you can't guarantee it every year either. So Yeah, and also, yeah, j things. just so everyone knows, this is ESA's thing. You know, they, that is a, mm -hmm. a, a a group of people that make these decisions. Don't, you know, they don't they're not making these games. So they are really dependent on everyone else having a good show so they can have a good show. And that and that's a good point yeah. to also bring up. I, and and yeah, I, just, I don't know. I don't know. I I like E3 as a week that we can all discuss games. We can get together like we're doing right now, have fun back and forth, show like, hey, I saw this game. It was really cool. I really liked it. I, it you know, did you see this? No, I didn't. No, you know, he, I love that back and forth. And I think, I mean, I didn't talk a single one of you motherfuckers last year about any games because it was just <laughs> this random spider web of like announcements yep. here. We're going to yep. announce this thing on a random Thursday afternoon. Like, you know, it's just mm -hmm. that too. It, it I think PR people almost need these full weeks where they know exactly that 30 minute window where this thing's going to be yep. shown. They could talk about this thing and they can have their PR release to this guy and that guy. They're going to go on their website and talk about, you know, it's very planned, meticulous. They know who they're talking to already. So maybe, 
Maybe that's what that's why we need an E3. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? It's just I don't know. It feels like they didn't prove why Jeff Keeley can't just be that event. <laughs> that's my thing. <laughs> Jeff wants to be. Trust me. It seems like he's like, oh, oh yeah. we're gonna be, we're gonna be the one. Shout out to him. He's probably oh, he should be. I don't know. He's really, he's good at this. I'll I'll give it to him. Mm-hmm. He's still. Hmm. He's still not E3, but maybe it's because he's E3 not. still exists, though. Yeah, if E3 died and he got all access to all that stuff, like he would make an excellent like week long sure. event. I guarantee it, because he mm. knows what like That's people true. want. Where the ESA is kind of just shooting blanks and shooting blind here sometimes. So, mm. docs and people. God, yeah, I can't that, that too. That too. I still can't believe that happened. All right, all <laughs> right. That is the show. And if, you know, if we like to end it. I calm it down a little bit, talking about what we are looking forward to through the week. First off, again, we want to thank Emmett for joining us. But Emmett, I like ending the shows by asking, what are you going to do for the weekend? You got that specific plan. You said you're streaming a lot. I know you're a writer as well. You said last time you were doing that Ratchet and Clank review. Give me some insights on what you're going to be doing and what you're going to be up to. Uh, I'm going to be up to a couple things. Uh, of course, tomorrow night, I am planning on streaming those Xbox demos, like I said. Yeah. Uh, but beforehand, we are going to be recording our Players Club podcast, which is something we just record and put up. We don't stream it live or anything. Players uh, Club? We ain't got Where it like can that I yet. find that? Players Club, you can find at vgu.tv.com. Mm. Wait, not .com. Not just vgu.tv. Not VGU.tv. Cancel the <laughs> .com. All right, not yeah. .com. Hold on, I'm writing this down. VGU.tv.com. No, not that. Not .com. Hold on. <laughs> VGU.tv. Just gotcha. that. Just goes straight um, there. Yeah. Yeah, that goes up just about every Wednesday. So uh, you'll look forward to me and Alan Muir, my uh, co-host on that show, talking about all this E3 stuff and some Ratchet and some Kentucky Route Zero. I know he hopped into that, so I want to ask him about that. Mm. Um, but then after that stream and after that podcast, uh, really, I'm just going to hop back into some of these games. I would like to beat something this week. I don't know if it's going to be Far Cry 5. I don't know if it's going to be Days Gone. I don't know what it's going to be, but I want to hop into something and beat it. Okay. And then I'm going to be going to an escape room with some friends from work for the first time nice. in that time. So, what? Yeah. yeah. That's oh, my God. That's what I'm doing Saturday. Yeah. So I'm very excited for that. I want to hear about this, please. For yes, love of God. I don't know if yeah. you want to tweet it or or message it to I, me. Will, I want to hear about this. In all likelihood, I will tweet it. In all Hell likelihood, yeah. I'll tweet it. I'll probably, yeah. I'll probably take my hair out and wash it and just like do something with it because mm-hmm. I'm kind of, these are mm-hmm. falling apart, but you know, we'll see. We'll see. That's all other stuff. <laughs> yep. Alex. So definitely going to go play Ratchet. I want to try to beat it uh, or play it before I leave because I'm going out of town this weekend. Um, I'm going to try to bring my Switch because I actually I have a backlog on there. I do want to go get back to uh pokemon i haven't played the last that last pokemon i really want to play it but um oh, uh, when i get back probably gonna play more apex like i normally do and then i definitely you brought this up Emmett. the other uh, i think it was yesterday dark uh, dungeons and dragons dark alliance this game looks cool yeah. it does right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does it's on game pass think, man mm-hmm. yeah. i literally was just looking at this it comes out june 22nd because i was on steam because i downloaded by the way i downloaded severed steel it's already done downloading Bingo. Um, so I'm going to apply that. I'm going to try that out. But yeah, that Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance, I was looking at it. I was like, is it a strategy game? You know, I was, I was, I wanted to check. And mm. I looked, man, it looks so cool. It does. Action uh, RPG. It, oh, yeah. it gives me a lot of, it gives me a lot of, you know, that's classic RPG mix with kind of like Kingdoms of Amulet. Like, you know, it's the other type of thing. But mm-hmm. like, okay. I really, so. I really want to try it. So I'll probably give that a shot. I actually just Good. beat Ratchet and Clank last night. Um, Did Emmett, you really? Emmett made me look like a bitch, so I had to go play. I had to go like, <laughs> all right, you beat this in a day? Yeah. All right, I can't say I like played this through five days. So I sat like, I'm down. I'm still in the same spot I was before. And I made ah, an error. Get around to it. I don't know Uh-oh. what happened. I have two trophies left. The get hmm. all the weapons, which I, I think I just need to look up how to do but I think I messed up. I did not get the five Grunther kills, and they don't spawn after you beat the game. So I think I'm going to have to replay the game uh, and kill a Grunther and get the trophy to pop. Oh, no. You know kill what? Grunther. I, okay. I, think the, I think the trophy for all the weapons is attached to a second playthrough on challenge mode as well. Uh, so you might be able to kill two birds with one stone. Cool. Thank God. Okay. Hopefully that works because I will try that for sure because I was curious if like maybe I can do stuff in challenge mode, but it was like super late. So I'm I just went to bed, but I will check. <laughs> I will check that out, Alex. You need to beat it. 
because we got to talk I about know. the game. It's, it was, a good game. Yeah. it's really good. It's really good. I know. It's really I, good. I, I know. I'm enjoying what I'm playing. Is this is you know, Apex, and then I got Baby. So I'm like, I could. Which one? What do I want to play? And then I was, and then I started rewatching uh, Black Sails because I've been wanting to watch, uh, see if he was got me in a pirate mood. And I was like, I love this show. And I want to watch something. So I was like, you know what? I'll restart my Black Sails. So I started rewatching that again. So I, I was like, now I, was, I don't know what to do. Yeah, I since I be ratchet, I think I'm gonna try and plant that over the weekend, and then I think I'm gonna go mm. and fucking play Dark Deity that I didn't know came out today. Yeah, you know, I'm yep. gonna go play yep. that now. And I will say, if you're into pirates, there's plenty of them in Ratchet. So just play it. There yep. are yep. plenty in Ratchet. You haven't gotten to it yet. Yeah. Keep going. Yep. You will see pirates. Yeah, exactly. You're gonna be like, oh my god, that's Davy Jones. I don't know. <laughs> oh G- boy, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. This was. One of probably my favorite podcasts ever. So thank you again, um, Emmett. I'm gonna I'm gonna gas you up real quick. Okay, I'm gonna be very clear oh boy, about something. Go. I'm gonna be very clear about something. I am shocked that a fellow uh, Georgian has not been picked up by somebody yet. You are one of the smartest and funniest out there. I one of my favorite things about being in this industry right now is being able to see you out there fucking grinding, and I love it. And every time I see you do something like yeah, I made this thing, I'm like fucking Emmett. God damn it. I got to now go do this thing. I got to go write some shit up in a script or something. And you keep inspiring me. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you I again. I appreciate that. We're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip the script a little bit. I hit this man up like three hours before the Capcom reacts. And he was like, yeah, I'll do it. And I was like, fucking what? <laughs> I, was, I couldn't believe you said yes. I was like, dude, get on here then. But again, man, I really do appreciate it. This has been so much fun. Yep. Awesome. I it, it's the feeling is mutual. I appreciate all of you having me on here and <laughs> shit, man. I I'm just a dude. I'm just a dude making stuff, and there's plenty of stuff I've yet to make that I've procrastinated on as well. But mm. I appreciate I, I appreciate that someone's recognizing. So thank you very He's much for dude. saying that. She's the dude. We all dudes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, I that's don't know my what fucking that reference motto. Is. I have no idea what that means. But I have a good beef. burger pin on that wall. Oh, mm-hmm. it's good, good burger. burger? Yep. Good Burger, home of the Good Burger, man. Take order. Oh, that's that's the a, end credits such, song. That's such a good movie. <laughs> and I, I don't yeah. think I ever watched the end credits. I, I just watched... Kenny and Kill, man. Oh, Kenny and mm-hmm. Kill, man. I, I wish they one more time, man. Just get, get the band together one more time. Get off of SNL for like five seconds. Uh, ch- mm-hmm. Chill out with Kel. I don't even know what he's doing. Kel's just chilling. He's, he, he's, he's got chilling. a white wife and enough residuals. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. That's all he's doing now. Yeah, he's, he's like an orange soda. Gets $20,000. He's like, all right, bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's vibing. He's got like Mike 2 money. He's fine. <laughs> yep. On that note, on that note, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for this hour and a half long podcast. Again, so much fun. Thank you for, uh, for sticking with us for so long. We like to say it every week, and we're going to keep saying it. Remember. Go, Chief. Go, Chief. Or, or how Chief. Emmett or Herman likes go Chiefs. I cut go it off Chief. last week. Unfortunately, I cut it off last week and I didn't fucking catch it. But Emmett thought we were saying go Chiefs, and he said, "What the fuck did you just say?" <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I was like, "No, oh, I hit boy. stop record. No, it would have been perfect." <laughs> but go Chief. Go Chief. <laughs>